Bonsai is about providing a window into nature. It has a magical quality in the sense that we all love to go up into the mountains and take a stroll and sit by a lake, take a long walk in the woods, and it's all to refresh our spirit. With bonsai, we do that by bringing nature to us in the form of a bonsai. When you come to this museum, the National Museum of Bonsai in Penjing, here in Washington, D.C., you can stand in front of a magnificent tree in a pot that's a small dimension of nature that's brought very close to you so that you can see every leaf, every needle, the bark of a tree, the color, and it changes from season to season. It's a very unique aesthetic that any person coming to this museum can have a communication between the work of art and the viewer. This museum is very unique because it is the first public bonsai museum in the world. Uh, it began in 1976 when we were celebrating our bicentennial and the Japanese people gave a wonderful collection of bonsai to the American people. This is the National Museum here in Washington, D.C., and it has the best collection of bonsai in the Western world, possibly internationally as well. One of my motivations in, in being involved in bonsai is to communicate it to a range of audiences as a, an incredibly beautiful aesthetic. Well, certainly, I believe it's the bonsai that makes it uh, unique and special. Uh, you can't uh, compare the 400-year-old Yamaki pine to anything else in the United States. You can't compare Goshen to anything else in the United States. And those, along with all the other trees that we have in the collection, make it very special. The Japanese collection and the North American collection and the Chinese collection certainly make this the most comprehensive bonsai museum in the world. The Bonsai Museum really does contain art. It's living art and it evolves, it changes, but its design is critical and, and uh, it's almost like a piece of sculpture, the three-dimensional. It's not a painting that hangs on a wall. You can walk around it. It has a back and a front and it has sides. People come in here all the time and they say, what is bonsai? But usually they don't say it like that. They say, what is bonsai? And then, so first we have to say, okay, it's pronounced bonsai. And that's your first lesson. <laughs> and because the word came from Japan and it means tree in a pot or planting in a pot. But it's more than that. It's an honor to be a part of this because of the history. You know that these, the, the core collection that began was in 1976 with this gift of 53 bonsai. The bicentennial gift came about because the then director of the National Arboretum, John Creech, Dr. John Creech, uh, had been a plant explorer and he had many friends in, in Japan. He thought it would be wonderful if the Japanese people would give a bonsai collection to the American people as a bicentennial gift. What many people don't know is when Dr. Creech went to pick up the trees, he took two empty suitcases to bring the entire collection home. He had no concept on the size of the trees or the vast enormity of the trees. It was unbelievable, the dedication ceremony. The pomp and circumstance, Henry Kissinger was there. It was an excellent start to a new long time relationship with the National Museum. You know, the war and the conflict was over and this was a, uh, a symbol or a sign of, of peace. And, and the future relationship between the two countries.
There were two trees that flanked the entrance to the imperial household and they were designed and styled to look just alike. And so the emperor gave one of those trees as a symbolic gesture of the ties between the two countries. And that tree is on display here. A gift of bonsai is a gift of peace. You know, after World War II, a lot of American servicemen who were in Japan learned about bonsai and they came back and, you know, we had a growing interest in bonsai, but it's nothing like what we have today. And I think what we have today is such a heightened interest in the art of bonsai because of what happened here at this National Museum. When you walk around the Japanese pavilion and you look at the number of years in training of some of those individual bonsai, there are some that go back to the 1700s. And so people have been taking care of these trees every day for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so it, it is, um, it's quite a legacy to have here. The Amaki Pine, which was one of the original trees that was donated in 1976, was given by Mr. Yamaki, so we affectionately call it the Yamaki Pine. It was actually in Hiroshima when the atomic bombs dropped, and it was in the Yamaki family for at least six generations before it came here to the United States. A few years ago, two young Japanese gentlemen who didn't speak a word of English landed at Dulles, came out to the museum, said they wanted to see their grandfather's tree. They were the Yamaki grandsons. It's truly, without the cliché, a family tree. When you begin a bone's eye, or when anyone begins a bone's eye, they begin it not for themselves, but to hand it on to somebody else. For me, it's really cool to think about what we do here as maintaining these trees, not only for the people of today, but for future generations to come and enjoy and appreciate. I think it's critical for a bonsai to grow as an art, to, to involve younger people, not only because we need people to carry on the tradition and carry on the art form, but also to make it applicable to us today. And it's a lot of fun to teach children bonsai because there's so many dimensions to it and all the tools and the soil and the tree and the pot, everything that goes along with it. It's a lot of fun and, and hopefully we, we get some new people interested in bonsai. This is my tree. This is my tree. This is my tree. This is my tree. And they're called a chef Lara. This is my tree. <laughs> Every year in May, the Potomac Bonsai Association, the National Bonsai Foundation, and the National Arboretum uh, come together and put on a bonsai festival. The festival is one of the largest attended bonsai festivals in the region. We have workshops throughout the weekend, demonstrations that continue throughout the whole weekend. We have people who are bonsai aficionados who've been in bonsai a long time and we have people who have never had any knowledge about bonsai. have a, a help tent so that a person that is interested in bonsai they can go into the vendors area and pick all the supplies that they need go to the help tent and create their own bonsai and they can leave with one and then of course the National Bonsai Penjing Museum is uh, on display One of the famous uh, bonsai we have in the North American Pavilion is Goshen. It's the most famous bonsai we have in <laughs> the North American Pavilion and probably in the museum in terms of the Western world. Goshen was uh, created by John Naka and John Naka is the most famous bonsai master in the United States. Uh, he helped to elevate bonsai's popularity to where it is today in the United States. Uh, there are 11 trees in the forest and each represents a grandchild. 
at the time that he created it. And John was endeared by everyone that knew him. Everyone loved him, and he was a wonderful man. And that's what really helps to make Goshen so special. You could take a picture of Goshen anywhere around the world and show it to a bonsai artist, and they will know that tree is Goshen, and they'll know that John Naka created that tree. John Naka would come here uh, once a year. We would go out into the collection and he would just say, bring that one, that one, and that one in. And we would bring him into the workroom. And we often called it bonsai in the round because we would surround John with bonsai. And he'd have this long bamboo stick and he would just point at what he would want done and move to the next tree. John said that bonsai was for everyone and he encouraged like people in South Africa to make bonsai with baobab and not try to make them look like Japanese bonsai, they look like baobab, only, only small. John Naka taught primarily using native plant material and try to do the best you can with what you have. Both Yuji Oshimura and John Naka were patron saints of the National Bonsai Penjing Museum. Yuji Oshimura taught mostly classical bonsai art, pure art highly refined bonsai, as established from 1829. Yuji Oshimura was a second generation bonsai artist who was born in a bonsai garden in Tokyo, Japan. He wanted to share his love and art of bonsai with everyone, not just the Japanese professional bonsai community. So he was the first one to teach the public and brought bonsai to America. And to honor him, the National Bonsai and Penjing Museum named their educational center after Yuji Oshimura. Their continued Yuji Oshimura's work and spirit of promoting bonsai education. We have a bonsai library at the Bonsai Museum that uh, contains a number of rare books that is a good resource for the staff and for uh, the public. we realized that we really should have a representation of Chinese bonsai or penjing because bonsai really began in China. Dr. Yi Sun Wu, who was a Hong Kong banker, had a collection of bonsai, a very extensive collection, and we convinced him to donate some of his penjing, and with that we built the Dr. Yi Sun Wu Chinese Pavilion. With bonsai, you get, it's very serious and very beautiful and you, it's, it's a very dignified thing. And with Pinjing, you get a big smile on your face that's very free form, which it is. And when we got the gift from Japan, of the 53 bonsai back in 1976. Six viewing stones came with those, six master stones that were very famous in Japan and we are privileged to have them here. The idea is that you have the living art form and then you also have something to represent the earth. And so you have these beautiful stones that look like miniature mountains, but you put them together with the small tree and the little mountain and say a scroll with a moon or a setting sun, and you've got a complete picture. Their gift of bonsai was not just of the trees, but it was of the art of bonsai. And the art of bonsai includes the art of displaying a bonsai in the proper season with the proper accoutrements that go with it. The attendance to the museum is increasing year by year. Ever since I came here in 95, I've seen uh, an increase in the number of people. What we are trying to do is to make the museum totally accessible to people of all ages, of all abilities, so that everyone can come to this museum. And not only do we have a world-class collection, we're also the National Arboretum. And you can't get much better than being the National Arboretum. 
and you know the national collection of tree of bonsai trees it's it's everybody's trees Mr. Kato believed that if everyone did bonsai, there would be more peace in the world. He said as people get involved with bonsai and they start taking care of bonsai, the caregiver starts understanding what the bonsai needs. It needs water, it needs fertilizer, it needs to be pruned, it needs to be transplanted. And as they take care of the bonsai over the years, a special bond develops between the caregiver and the bonsai. And this love of the uh, and bond between the person and the bonsai expands to include all of nature. He was so important to this museum because he helped bring it about initially with the Japanese uh, bicentennial gift. Saburo Kato argued that he would help us, he would come to America. He also went around Japan to all the nurserymen and collected 53 of the best bonsai to make that part of this gift. And so he and Dr. Creech were the two critical ingredients to making this all happen. In 1982, we formed the National Bonsai Foundation as a 501c3 organization to support and advise the National Arboretum in expanding the museum. One of the major projects that we are involved in and have been since the beginning of the National Bonsai Foundation is raising money to build new buildings and renovate our older buildings. And that's always a problem. These buildings, they don't have roofs on them, so they're exposed to all the elements. And so they degrade faster than art museums that have roofs. I think it's important to support this museum because of the aesthetic of bonsai and penjing. Even if you don't practice bonsai yourself or aspire to have a bonsai, when you come to this museum, more than any place else in the world, you can see that ancient tradition. Moving across an ocean, coming to this country, evolving into a different art form, but it's something uniquely American that still holds on to its roots in Asia and is here today and in for future generations to appreciate as well.